Hi students, welcome to chapter 11. Chapter 11 is called Statistical Measures, and today we'll, we will be covering lesson one. The topic of lesson one is how do you find the mean of a set of numbers? So the first thing I want you to write is mean, and then we're going to define the mean, what it means to have a, a mean of a set of data. So the mean of a data set, that's just a set of numbers, is the sum of the data divided by the number of pieces of data. So the mean is, or the mean of a data set is the sum of the data divided by the number of pieces of data. Another word for the mean that you've probably heard of is the average. So that is the big idea for lesson one. The mean, also known as the average. So this is a lot of words for something that I know you've done before in elementary school. So let's look at an example. I want you to find the mean of the following set of data. 160, uh, 320, 100, 110, 200, and 220. So, going back to our definition, we're going to sum, come up, find the sum of all the data, so we're going to add all those together, and then we're going to divide that sum by how many pieces of data there are. So when you're showing your work for finding the mean, it would look like this. You would total everything, 160, plus 320, plus 100, plus 110, plus 200, plus 220, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sets, or 6 pieces of data. Always a good idea to count how the values one of the biggest mistakes I find kids make, and I make myself all the time, is I'll, you'll skip a number. Like out of all this stuff, you'll write, a, write it all down, but you'll miss one. Or you'll miss one when you're adding uh, as well. So I'll count. Here's the sum of all the values. So it's the sum of the data, and I want to divide that. So this means divide by the number of pieces of data. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of data. So that's what I'm going to do with my calculator. If I add all that up, I get 1,110 over 6. That line means divide. So if I divide 1,110 divided by 6, I get, put an arrow here, I get 185. So the mean of this data, or the average of this data, would be 185. All right, something else that you'll see is sometimes you'll get a set of numbers and they'll just be numbers. Other times it will, your data will be presented in a different way. Here is another way that you'll see data presented. Find the mean, or average, from 
a dot plot. So you might be wondering, what the heck is a dot plot? That's what I'm going to show you next. So you might see something like this. Your data could be represented in a dot plot, something that looks like this. So you might have a number line like that or a, a part of a number line and you might have dots like this. There's a dot and on mine I've got three dots and on 10, okay, that is a dot plot. So these dots represent the number so this represents a 7, that's a 9, that's another 9, that's another 9, and then a 10 and a 10. So if you have a dot plot, what you're going to have to do is read the dot plot and just write down the values of data from the dot plot. So 7, I'm just going to start writing down my data values. 7, I've got a 9, and I'm adding them all together. Got another 9, another 9, a 10, and another 10. And again, good idea to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I should have 6 data values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I know I'm dividing that sum by 6 values. I add all those up on my calculator and I get 54 over 6, 54 divided by 6, the mean or the average of that data is 9. Okay, uh, before we do the last example, and the last example is, so actually before the last example, if you're finding the mean, this is what your work should look like. You should be showing the total of all the values and what you're dividing by, how many how many data values there are. So this is what your work should be looking like when you're finding the mean. I should not just see a number 185. I want to know how you got it. Same with this right here. Here's another. Finding the mean should be shown by the data values, what you're dividing by, and figuring it out. Not just a single number. I don't want to see just 185 or a 9. You're going to show me what you did to get there. Okay, uh, before the last example, hidden treasure for this lesson. Uh, the hidden treasure for this lesson is what is an expression in math? So if you remember, great. If not, look it up. Uh, you can use your glossary or, of course, uh, math. kids' math dictionary is another option. Or just search it uh, on search it online and find it on some some other resource so an expression what does what is an expression in mathematics and you could give an example as well okay the last kind of problem we're going to do is not calculating the mean it's on the last type of problem we're going to look at what if you have, what if you know the mean and you know some of your data, but you have a missing data value? How do you figure out what that missing value is? So here's my example, and it's kind of a long one. So we're going to look at how many messages Mary sent. So Mary, uh, over six months, okay? So Mary sent these numbers of messages. Okay, she sent these number of messages for five months, and I'm going to write down some numbers. Uh, first month, she sent 494 messages. Then the next month, she sent 502. The next month, 486. And the next month, 690. Sent more messages that month. Uh, and month five, 
478. And I don't know how many messages she sent in the last month, month six. But the average, I need to tip this down so you can read it. The average number of messages The average number of messages, abbreviate mess, uh, for six months her average number of messages sent for six months was 532. So the question is, how many messages in month number six? So let's go through that problem one more time. So she sent these number of messages, 494, 502, 486, 690, and 478. And over six months, her average was 532 but we don't know the six month. So we're trying to find, well, how many messages did she send during that six month? So I know I can go backwards. If I know that my mean or average is 532, and I know that there's six data values, I can undo, I can work backwards to get the total by doing 532 if this is my average, 9, and I divide it by 6, I can take my average, multiply it by the number of data values I have, and that will give me the total. 9 times 6 is 54. Same thing with this problem. I can do the average, 532, times the total number of data values, which is 6, and that gives me... 3,192. So I know that that is her total number of messages that she sent. Now I'm going to show you visually what, what this means. So I know that she has... I'm going to draw a bar diagram here. Let's see. How could I do that? So here is a model, and I this is all the messages. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I I know some of the numbers. This is 494. Month number two is 502. And 486, 690, 478, and question mark. I don't know what that last month month six was. I also know the total. I know that the total number of messages, so from here to here, that total is 3,192. I can use this model, and some of you probably are seeing how to do this, to find that. I want to take my total, and I want to subtract all of these put together. That will give me how many messages she sent during month six. Here's what that looks like. 3,192. Subtract. Now I want to put, add all these together into one group. I'm going to put parentheses here and I'm going to add them all up. 494 plus 502 plus 486 plus 690, plus 478. That's all one group, all five months put together. So I would add all of those first because they're in parentheses. So the next line, uh, the next line would look like this. 3,192, subtract, 
Adding all those on your calculator should give you 2,650. Then when you subtract right here, you would have 542. So the last month, that month six, she sent in six months, she sent 542 messages in the six month. All right, so those are the types of problems you're going to be working on today. Finding the mean, uh, if it just says find the mean directly, you're gonna do this. Add all your data values, divide by how many data values you have. If you have a missing data value, this is going to be your strategy. You're going to work backwards to get the overall total and then subtract all the other values put together from the total will give you a missing data value. Okay, uh, that is chapter 11, lesson 1. I'll be back soon for lesson 2.